Um, and now, you know, another thing that, because I know Maliki mentioned, some things sometimes get overlooked, like some of the games that are in the middle there. Um, yeah. One thing that I feel like a lot of people overlooked near the later part of E3 is Summerfest. Uh, mm, Summer yeah. Game Fest is uh, Jeff Keighley's new little baby uh, that launched alongside E3. Um, but they're not not related. They just kind of happen around the same time. So we could associate mm, them like in Kart our head. Cena and uh, Vin Diesel. Yes. <laughs> right. yes. They are. They are. Uh, but they don't really talk to each other. <laughs> I feel like yeah. they, they're still <laughs> trying to figure out E3 and Summer Game Fest if they're competitors or not. Uh, but uh, I thought we would just talk a little bit about what we got in those reveals, how we thought about uh, Summer Game Fest as a whole. Uh, yeah. Steve, do you want to kick off the conversation? I'd with love your to. Yeah. I th- uh, I mean- announcements? I mean, the the big one. I mean, Jeff Keighley got Elden Ring. Come on. Like, yeah. <laughs> shout out to him. That, the that was The big circle game that everyone was going nuts about. Yeah. Everyone wanted to see Elden Ring, and they finally got it. I agree. That was like, no matter what happened during that show, if he got to showcase that, it would have been worth every second of the wait. And yeah. for pretty much anyone watching, it seemed like it was. It was. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, even when you watch the presentation, you could tell how genuinely excited he was that yeah. He, yeah. he was the one to be able to do that. And he yeah. pulled it off. And it didn't leak nothing. Nope. You know, nobody like had any uh, rumors about it. I mean, obviously, everyone was speculating considering just the hype around Summer yeah. Game Fest and Jeff Keighley potentially being the one. But yeah. there was nobody who was like, yep, it's leaked. It's happening. You know, there was right. nothing like that, which I think is amazing you got to give it up to jeff keely and his team for uh for really doing a good job of keeping things under wraps when it came to that reveal um for me as well i loved the opening it's starting off with the reveal of tiny tina's wonderlands yeah. i'm a big fan of the borderlands franchise another borderlands game is not something i was expecting to see so that was awesome that that's happening i'm looking forward to seeing what the gameplay is going to be like is it does anyone know is it just straight up another borderlands it's, game no it's so it's gonna be like oh Sorry, Sorry, you probably know, Steve. It's probably going to be like the like the handsome Jack that they did. Uh, there was also they did a D and D campaign style. Yes, right. I remember that DLC. Yeah. Was so much fun. So, so I'm expecting it's probably going to be like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think it still is a first person shooter in yeah. that regard, but Blue it is heavily aspects, yeah. heavily more inspired on the D and D aspect of it, yeah. mechanics rather than lo- like a looter shooter. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm interested. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. I know um, Randy Pitchford was talking on Twitter about how he was just, it's a game that he's always been wanting to make at Gearbox. Mm-hmm. So he's very excited about it. Sounds like a passion project. We didn't get a Borderlands movie trailer, which is, weird. I guess, a little uh, Super strange. A little weird. But um, I guess it is what it is. I'm just still, I'm looking forward to more Borderlands stuff. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Borderlands is, I think Borderlands is one of those series that, whether you love it or hate it you have to give it respect for yeah. how it's done so well mm-hmm. to burst out of the shell of like looter shooters first person like it started out as like fart jokes and like <laughs> this weird like internet humor um and kind of evolved into like a genuinely uh fun and intriguing series that has some story depths to it and like mm-hmm. even telltales um tales from the borderland yeah. was yeah. such a great addition to show that borderlands can be more than just this basic looter shooter in the wasteland you can right. make movies you can make tiny tina's wonderland you can there's so many different stories that you can tell within this world and props to gearbox for for setting it up for that instead of having to kind of expand on it at a later date like it's all been building up to this it feels like and i'm excited for like a borderlands resurgence yeah borderlands is such like yeah they have their their issues uh the developers you know that sure right but in terms of the franchise and the franchise alone just as a game it there's so many possibilities and with summer game fest there was no other person than jeff Keeley to bring tiny tina's wonderland to that e3 vibe and then Mm -hmm. also pair in like you know Kojima. I mean, that was my highlight. I mean, yeah. I know oh, Aaron's that was like not mine. flipping out. <laughs> no, it was so good because we're all wondering what is Kojima doing? He's been very silent. And right. then they have like this virtual talk, and you're like, okay, this can't just be this ch- no this random can't. conversation. No, but it got the hype, you know. And what I was talking about with the Nintendo Direct, what it lacked that surprise factor. 
it wasn't surprising to see Kojima, but to kick off whatever, you know, the director's cut for Death Stranding with a tease to Metal Gear, that was I, shocking yeah. and surprising. That was buzzworthy. <laughs> that was like the celebrity of like celebrities presenting the fan fantasy, <laughs> right? right? Okay. Um, a box. I, I'm going to be lose our mind. <laughs> I'm going to be in the minority here. I know that I'm going to be and it's not just cuz of this running gag that we have on the show <laughs> of my my disliking of Death Stranding, but when Hideo Kojima comes on screen, I was of the same opinion. I was like, okay, there's no way Hideo Kojima is at Summer Game Fest right now with Jeff Keighley so that they can just catch up, you know? Sure. Like, <laughs> buddy's just like, oh, hey, how you doing, you know? So, yeah. and then as soon as Hideo Kojima said, okay, one more thing, and the PlayStation, like, yep. the PlayStation Studios logo dropped, I was like, oh, my God, Silent Hill, please right. tell me it's time. And then right. it was more Death Stranding, and I was like, are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I, but why... In a year, like, I think I went into E3 Summer Game Fest knowing it's been a hard year. We're not going to get those big, exactly. those big deliveries on what for fans sure. want. But we could get, like, surprises that we didn't expect, like a director's cut for Death Stranding. So mm-hmm. I guess that's why I didn't expect that right off the right. bat. I wasn't expecting anything from Hideo Kojima at all. It's mm-hmm. just that once he hit me with the one more thing, I was like, oh my God, yeah. like they're doing it, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And you, I think That's every, fair. like for, for a lot of people, as soon as you see that PlayStation logo, you're like, okay, here we go. There's yeah. going to be something new there. But I yeah. do appreciate Hideo and, and everything he does, just troll his audiences yeah. and just <laughs> like, again, just like point point everything at, uh, at Konami and just do like a blatant rip off of Metal Gear and yeah, yeah. I, I love the humor that he brings and the self awareness and the trolling that he knows that he's doing to the entire internet. Yeah, like he, yeah. he, he's so self aware. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I will say, and, and to Camille's point, like this is one of those big moments for the Summer Game Fest, at least in my opinion. But it came so quickly after the Tiny Tina's uh, announcement, and then mm-hmm. you had Metal Slug Tactics. Then this one came, and then it kind of the the presentation just kind of went on on. like we didn't have that big that big bump i I feel like the placement of this particular conversation this particular reveal would have been better suited for like in the middle or even near the end even near the end no i i 100 agree because yeah coming off of that you do have that like a little Mm -hmm. bit of adrenaline rush where you're like okay cool today was working on something you know he's he's delivering something that you know i i feel like death stranding players Mm -hmm. at least want they want something for playstation 5 so that's a big that's a big pop, but then Summer Game Fest just kind of went on and you didn't have the same that momentum. Thing. Yeah. I also will say there's there's something that Jeff Keighley's been been doing. And he's, he's done this with the Game Awards. Of course, he's doing it with Summer Game Fest now. And I think it's just something that it's it's novelty and there and at some point like it sometimes it's cool, but like the musical performances, I think just gotta go. Um what? to be honest. I, I think really, they need think to be better in, uh better okay. I think I curated. love the the orchestra. Bringing the orchestra mm-hmm. of the games in, even the Sonic one, which was okay. I wasn't for Sonic, but it, it was related. The Weezer performance, and I actually used to listen to a lot of Weezer, but it just went on and on. Yeah, yeah, it was... it, 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 to be honest, it's one of those things where, like, like I said, there are instances where it's worked. I, I remember during the Game Awards, I think they had the um, the the music performance for like the Doom soundtrack. I I, I thought that that yes. stuff was was cool. There are mm-hmm. instances where it's cool, but it's one of those things where you can get something cool like the Doom soundtrack, or you can get the Weezer performance that goes on for 10 minutes, you know, where yeah. it's just like, okay, not, time to take a pee break. So I feel like it's all or nothing. And was you it a have game all of it or they none were of it, doing... And I would prefer to have none of it. You're right. Was it a game they were revealing? Like, or doing the soundtrack for or something was... like that, that I didn't really care about? And I for went into the break. Okay. I think it was, yeah, th- I can't remember. And I wish I did. But yeah, there w- they did bring someone on to kind of sing a song from the game and i was like well i don't have any attachment to this yeah, yeah. but maybe yeah. what it is is because i feel like some of the bigger titles um and i don't want to necessarily say triple a because i feel like even if he had studio mdhr come and be like mm-hmm. can you the the team that puts together the music for cuphead can they do a live performance that i would have been interested in i think it's yeah. really choosing those musical performance and those musical elements, because I really do think Summer Game Fest has something great going on there. And I can understand why Jeff kind of put all of his announcements to the beginning, because he doesn't want people to drop off on the stream and leave, Um, especially because like there's performances and there, you know, 
the fact is there are those games in there that not a lot of people will know of or even care about, right? So he has to kind of keep people there for a certain amount of time. Um, But I feel like you have to be more, curate more those musical performances because I think that is the charm of Summer Game Fest and what Jeff done has done in the Game Awards before. Those are the moments where like, oh my God, this Doom performance is awesome. Um, so, so I'm hopeful for that in the future. But were there any other games from Summer Game Fest that you guys were like really excited about? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. So as a Diablo fan, mm. we find... We finally, we are finally, finally, finally getting the Lost Ark over in the West on uh, in fall. And that is such a huge, like, middle finger to Blizzard Entertainment of like, hey, <laughs> your fans have been waiting for Diablo 4 for forever. You're yeah. remastering Diablo 2. Then yeah. you're giving us a mobile Diablo. You know what? Here's this really popular Asian uh, MMO, you know, kind of style Diablo and we're going to put it out in the fall and for him to have that but then still be so like humble about it because there are a lot of middle fingers in the summer games fest performances yeah, like yeah. that that show is full of them but this one was such like a nod like a subtle nod uh as like fan service like hey this is coming for you and i really enjoyed that um, yeah. i think i think that you're right that there was a lot of stuff that maybe got passed over by other people but mm-hmm. like you got two point campus um mm-hmm. anna Crucis, even though it's kind of like that left for dead back for blood uh style it still looks really cool there was a lot of like um there was overwatch content there was valorant yes. content there was escape from tarkov content yeah i they did such a good job of balancing that fan service of like hey guess what here's this stuff coming out for games that are already out mm-hmm. but then we've also got these really cool games that are going to be coming out in the future i and i think that is something that summer games fast summer's game fest is going to have to balance going forward because they're trying to do this whole e3 week in a couple of days in in one video yes. they don't they can't separate it up but like here's playstation's conference here's xbox here's yeah. nintendo they kind of have to you know get it all in one little short sweet here you go um and, and make it really tight that, yeah. yeah exactly and unfortunately that hurt them a little bit but it's much better than what we got in years past where it was just way too spread out and way too much all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, Like retrospectively, this was their best showcase to date. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, And the thing is with summer game fest as well, I feel like maybe some of the smaller games you don't need to put in the main show, have it like a treehouse style where you sit down with the devs because even on summer game fest, like their social media outlets and where the stream was happening, Days after for E3, Jeff then was on those streams, right. streaming direct conferences from, you know, Bethesda and Xbox or the Nintendo Direct. Well, not the Nintendo Direct because then they put out that notice. But um, I think maybe there needs to be like and that's great because he's then showing that he's not trying to be a competitor with E3. It's just an right. add on. Um, yeah. But then maybe Summer Game Fest does need to be a bit longer with tailored content on specific days. If it is a deep dive into like these smaller games um, with the devs and playing through them instead of just rebroadcasting like a streamer other presentations throughout e3 but that but that's my take on it no to a certain extent i i think i completely agree i think moving forward there i think there is a time and place to have the giant keynote where you do come out with the top tier announcements but then also sprinkle in you know the the smaller games as well but then i think comparatively look at what microsoft did this year right they did Mm -hmm. their game showcase where it was just nothing but games 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 and then they did their games showcase extended where they did do these deep dives with the individual yeah. developers and i think it, tree uh, nintendo with their treehouse same thing keep it kind of apart where you do have like the big keynote and then you can do like the segmented little um uh, you know talks with developers because mm-hmm. i think Certain people want both, but not everyone wants it all truncated into a 90 minute presentation, right? Yeah. 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 Um, now, yeah. We, we originally, oh, sorry, go ahead. 
Like no, and I was gonna say, um, you know, we talked about we talked about Fast and Furious uh, in in the pre-show and kind of earlier on, um, and we brought up the joke about Jurassic Park and, and Fast and Furious <laughs> collaborating. But we're getting another Jurassic Evolution, which I think is a game that nobody really asked for, but everyone's kind of excited for. Like that, that's kind of what you're not excited. I love the Jurassic Evolution I, yo, game. Yo, I love Jurassic Park. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jurassic Evolution looks like it came out in the early 2000s. Let's be real. It, no, okay, that that is fair. But I I think that them continuing to support that series and try to keep it alive is good. Because okay, eventually someone else is going to take over and make a better Jurassic like park you know park builder game i i'm not expecting that game to be amazing i'm just expecting eventually for someone to say oh jurassic park's still relevant let's make a better Uh, version and then that comes out you know it's like this let's keep it alive for now until we get something better which is bad to say i i hate to put that out there but like that's kind of the hope for it and i think that summer games fest does that for a lot of games that would have that should be big successes but isn't going to really connect with fans. Mm -hmm. And this is just kind of a way for them to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. 